Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'll be explaining how to stop losing arena points, if that be in Contender League or Champions Division. If this video helps you out, then click that like button as it helps me out more than you know. I don't usually like asking for subscribers, but lots of you aren't subscribing that are watching my videos. So if you do enjoy this video and find my content entertaining in some way, then subscribe. Tell the little bitch if you keep talking, we can get busy. Get rich or die trying to tell it like feed. All like Trevor Dunbar, too shifty. If it's bad blood, I tell her ass with it. That's a dead face, is like a genocide. On the fence, shorty, go and pick a side. No, you can't be no friend of mine. Double cross me, get crucified. I'm so sincere, bitch, I've been here. You ain't know me, bro, it's been years. We about to be on, that's what they feel. When I drop down, I'ma shed tears. I just been planning on the next year. Collect that paper like a cashier. I said what I want, then end up. So, are you guys consistently losing points, or are you guys getting into loads of games and getting a ton of points and then losing them all within a few minutes? Comment what your problem is in Arena, and I'll make another video based on your comment. There are a lot of easy ways to avoid losing points, and I'll be going over that in chunks, so I'll be putting on the screen timestamps of when each new topic is discussed. Early game, mid game, and end game. Let's go over your early game to start the video off. You want to find a landing spot that isn't too contested, so around no one to two people will land. You also want fairly good loot and a good understanding and knowledge of this location. I will go over two locations and explain mid and end game for this location. I'll pick one that I tend to drop that hasn't got the best loot, but if you're aiming for placement, this is a great example. In between Steamy Stacks and Cracker Cliffs, there sits three houses, each with a round two to three chests. Now this location works in many different ways. Epic recently removed a lot of slurp trucks so it's difficult to find places to get free shield. However, when you loot these houses you want to head over to a slurp truck which hasn't been removed. Slurp trucks give you 100 HP or shield depending on what you need so 100 health in general so save your minis and big pots for your end game or mid game fights. Once you have picked up your shield you may realize that running to the circle could be an issue. When I land here, one out of three times I am in the first zone. So getting the first circle isn't that easy guys, so loot up quick and start rotating early and you won't lose any health from Storm. This location is really good as when running to the left or right side of Frenzy, as you'll seem to come across Frenzy when you're rotating, all players would have been in the next circle or rotating much ahead of you, so you don't need to worry about taking fights mid-game about this location. Another location I like to personally go is Risky Reels. The reason for this is that you get max wood and max metal within seconds, or well, not, maybe not seconds, but very soon, and loot is very good for the size of it. You also have many different ways to go, and there are lots and lots of different angles in the place. So in Risky Reels there are around 12 chests, which is easily enough loot, and get what you need for mid game fights and end game fights. Risky Reels is also usually in zone, and if it isn't, you will only normally have to run a couple of meters to make the edge of zone. The edge of circle is crucial guys, remember this. Why do I say that? Well, Epic Games made changes to Fortnite Circle recently, and it used to be more specific for the direction it was going, but now it's completely random for the following circle. When you get your loot, just box up on the edge of the circle until you find out where the next circle is, and rotate early if the zone is far, and rotate late if it's really close to where you are. Now, let's go over mid-game. This could be the biggest mistake where people lose points. At this point, you maybe had a kill or two, maybe none at all, which is fine. You have stack loot and you're ready to win this game. Mid game is where your IQ comes into play. Knowing when to rotate, which fights you should take, or how to avoid fights. This is really quite simple actually. I won't take too long explaining this, but if you see two people fighting, then make sure you have a good angle where nobody else can snipe or spray you. Wait for them to be in the open when they're both fighting, and when you see one of the players getting hit hard, in the fight, go for him. If you see a player whose shield just got cracked, he is 100 health or less, so that's when you take your opportunity to get those extra 20 points. If you succeed and get the kill, then push the other player that was already in the fight, who was fighting the player you just killed, and finish him off. But if you don't get the kill on the first guy, then I wouldn't go for the fight and make a run for it, as the enemy will either have his full health regen or he will have much more loot, 
approach to go with. If you see a player 10 or 30 meters in front of you just sprinting in front of you and he hasn't spotted you, it's a free kill. When I say it's a free kill, what I mean is start spraying your AR, see how much damage you can deal. If you can't hit him from higher than 66 or more, then I don't know, is it worth the push? If you can hit him for 66 or higher, fully push. You know that he doesn't have much shield left. In summary, take fights where you won't lose health, but you'll gain points by third partying. When a player is close and open take fire, see what you can do, but also once you get your top 25, that's when you can be confident and play even more aggressive if necessary. You want to be in control guys. Now, for the most exciting but also nerve wracking part, end game. This is the hardest to fully understand as it relies on your mechanics but also your IQ. Should you take high or stay low ground? Is it necessary to take storm fights? Is it worth rotating early in a 50-50 zone? Okay, so the first one you should always take high ground if necessary. When I say that, there are many reasons why you should and shouldn't do it. The obvious reasons for taking high ground at some point late in zone, if you have an RPG with four or more rockets, then you probably should take high ground. If you have two or more floppers, then you should try and stay in the storm and take high ground when the enemy least expects it going up behind him and taking high ground. And you need to make sure you have enough mats. 600 or more should do it guys. Figure out the way you play. Are you good at getting kills or are you good at keeping placement points? I have a mix of both as I can usually get between 3 to 8 kills in an arena solo game in champs. I'll aim to get 1 or 2 early game kills then leave all the other kills for end game. Once you get your top 15 it's your opportunity to dominate even more and get more points and you'll need to position yourself well and sadly I can't really explain how your positioning works because you need to be aware and comfortable with your own plays alongside your positioning. You need to remember you will get 20 points for just a kill which is actually quite a lot of points. If you do take fights at early or mid game which I went over you can get over 150 points every single game. Don't always rely on your mechanics you need to be aware of the situation you are in. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you would like a more in-depth analysis of Arena and using a pro player as an example, let me know in the comments. I host giveaways on my Discord server and Twitter, so check out the description. I am on the road to 10,000 subscribers, so each and every person who does indeed subscribe will help me out. And that's it for this video, guys. Peace out.